Hello, sir. Hey, how's it going? Oh, it's going, man. <laughs> it's going on. Well, you know, covering South by today, and there was a pretty cool. It's like the. It's like a. It's like a spinoff from South by Southwest that they do this time of year. That's just all about ecology, and. Oh, that's fucking awesome. It is pretty cool. I mean, there's there's a lot of greenwashing bullshit. You know, there's a lot of companies there that are like, we're not evil at all. You know, we're helping the environment. There's all that crap, but there's also a bunch of really cool stuff happening too. Um, uh, this professor from like Texas, from like a university in Houston, who's one of like the founders of the environmental justice movement, did the opening keynote talking all about like environmental racism. I mean, so there's been some cool shit. Um, and today, uh, there was a great piece from this guy named Eric Kleinenberg, who's a sociologist that lives in New York. Uh, and where he lives was in the blackout during Sandy. And he did a lot of studies of like the Red Hook Collective and Occupy Sandy and stuff like that. Um, right. So it's pretty interesting. And he was talking a lot about, <clears throat> you know, responding to climate disasters and extreme weather brought on by climate change and how we need to adapt our cities. And so I kind of wanted to talk to you a little bit and just get your perspective from my article uh, that I'm going to write about his thing since you've been in the thick of it more than most people I know. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, first off, I don't, I mean, can, uh, can I use like your, your, real name or something on the article i don't know what to call you there <laughs> i don't think i can call you liam fuck all in the article unfortunately um you can call me liam shea shea S -H -E -A. all right S-H-E-A. S -H -E -A. all right cool fantastic um you know i know a bunch of this but just so i can quote it give me kind of your the reader's digest version of how you got involved with sandy and what happened there with you <laughs> it's gonna be hard i know there's a lot there but well, no, I mean, the one fortunate thing, I mean, you know, kind of a blessing in disguise when you look back on it, I mean, I was, all right, it landed on me here, right? Mm -hmm. But then if you go look, you know, Brooklyn, Casper was there. You had pretty well-equipped community-type people in the areas already, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we, we were, I mean, not only were we, you know, affected by it, and it was right in, the, in our face. We were prepared already, kind of, you know, from Occupy, and you know, you know. So, so what? What? Sorry, what? Which neighborhood were you in again? I'm sorry, I, I guess I lost. Or like, which part was your? Right, um, I'm in Staten Island. It's a neighborhood called Midwood Beach. Mhm. Mm okay. Cool. Yeah. But so so go ahead. So you were saying that you know with Occupy that that helped you be more prepared for for what was going to happen. Well, yeah, how to you know kind of not de-escalate the situation, but basically survey and say, wait a minute, what resources you know do I have, you know, to help the situation? And you know, one it was you know dealing with people, and two the internet. We, you know, the internet kind of knew where where I was, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it was really easy to get a hold of people. I mean, just like, you know, what's going on, you know, in other parts of the world. Just we know people on the ground, so we were the people on the ground, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. more or less. And you, and you know your neighbors, and you know who's who, you know what I mean? So it, it it was a big stretch for you know for the community to be like oh shit we gotta help each other out, but some of us just kind of stepped up because we're used to doing that you know. Yeah, he actually talked so, a lot about uh, the the, prof the professor. They talked a lot about the Chicago heat wave, and he said in his study of the big Chicago heat wave, which I didn't even hear or heard about until his lecture, um, but it was apparently almost right. as deadly as Katrina, and. Um, he said that it was all about survival rates were all about neighborhoods. That if you were in a neighborhood, the, the vulnerable populations like old people, if they were in a neighborhood that had a community that had sidewalks and people that knew each other, then they tended to survive. But if they were in an isolated neighborhood, they died. Is that kind of true? Yeah. You know, that Sandy, and he also sort of said that, like, you know, uh, so, so I guess like, you know, so, so what you, what Occupy Sandy did, what people like you and the, and the volunteers in your neighborhood did, 
like someone couldn't have come in from outside and done what you did, right? Like, I mean, they tried, the Red Cross came in, but they weren't effective, right? You guys were feeding the Red Cross sometimes. Um, yeah, we were the ones dealing with the Red Cross because they couldn't get their shit right. You know, they couldn't even figure out where to start. They just rolled up and they were walking around with like an ice cream truck handing out cold coffee. Whereas you walk on the street and you meet a couple driving up with hot coffee. They just drove in from Chicago. And where can I go to help? You know what I mean? So the, the difference so was that they were asking, they were, they were connecting with locals. Is that kind of the difference? Yes. Yes. They didn't just wolf in because, you know, I wasn't going to let that happen. And, you know, neither were, you know, you know how it is when, you know, people just show up and it's like, okay, I got to brief you on this a little bit. Okay. This is where we're at. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you, you, you kind of had to ease people into the process, even when Occupy Sandy finally, I mean, I was here before them, of course, before they even set up in the neighborhood, I already, you know, kind of put the word out, you're not having a GA here, don't live here, you don't know these people, see what the fuck they need real quick before you start telling them what they need, because you can't do that, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What are, I mean, what are some of the mistakes that, that you saw you know, the big groups or whatever make when they came in and didn't really understand the local needs? Um, I hate using the word, you know, outsiders or anything like that. Sure. One, you know, when people got into the area, it's, it's shell shock. People couldn't believe that this was a neighborhood, you know, and people actually were still here, you know. So once they initially got over that, you know, they would try to walk up and help people and nobody would even go near them. You know, I mean, you've seen the deal we had with these Red Cross trucks. They'd pull up, sit in the middle of the street with a ding-dong bell <laughs> and think people were going to come, you know, think pe- thinking people were going to rush out to them and say, oh, thank you for being here. No, fuck you. We're working on our houses here. you got to get out of that truck. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You you got to engage people, or nobody's going to deal with you. You know. Sure. So, and so, so yeah. So some of it was that, that they they were so you feel like they were so shocked by the state of things and and what they were seeing and just not being prepared that they weren't they were they weren't reaching out directly to people. They were expecting people to come to them. Is that? Yeah. They they came in like it was just some generic protocol that they follow. You know what I mean? Right. Like they came in very, they, they they came in very sanitary to the situation where you know people just lost their entire lives. I think you need to have a little bit more of a bedside manner. Mm-hmm. You know, and these are people who were hysterical. They're hysterical crying, and you're handing them a cup of cold coffee and a piece of paper asking what they need. Right. <laughs> they Come can't on. even begin. They couldn't even begin to, to 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 say what they needed at that point. Right. I mean, it's just. Exactly. You know, we were pushing them off the street. We were go, literally going behind the Red Cross trucks and pushing them like they were like broken down. <laughs> you know, like get the fuck out of here. All you're doing, you're upsetting people at this point. You know. Mhm. Mhm. Um. You know, because like you see, the needs change. You know, but the internet was an amazing help. You know that that's the one thing I I can't. You know, I was here. You had people in Brooklyn, you know, this, you know, people who were already kind of a, a close knit to a degree. Like we, we know how to, what's the word? One, get the word out, and we all knew each other. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So there was a familiar, already a familiarity to it. So, okay, this is what we need. This is what we can do. Okay, you know. Mm-hmm. What, uh, what are things like there now? How's, I mean, it's still, I mean, I'm not going to, it's not a hundred percent. I mean, even the house next door to me, it should be, I mean, it's so documented. I mean, it's literally a mold bomb. Mm-hmm. Like, long story short, the house was never gutted. The house was never cleaned out. You know what I mean? So there's still, there's still, so wherever, there's, sorry, go on. There's, so the, the food that the woman was eating for dinner when the water came in is still sitting there. 
Oh wow! I I was in the house. I was in the house about a year ago with a P ninety five mask on. Damn. You know, one of the one of the fucking hazmat, and I went in there to take pictures. I mean, even Dustin Slaughter came in here. You know, after the, I mean, six months after that, I mean, I was in there with a mask on it. I was sick for three days just for going in there. So now the city of New York just instead of, you know, dealing with Wells Fargo, because that's who owns the house now, they came and just conquered the whole house up. So the house is literally here just pasturing. I can't open my window. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wow. But there's a couple, there's a bunch of houses in the neighborhood like that. But then you also have homes that, okay, yeah, they were cleaned out, but they never did the basement the right way. So now they're over here renting a basement out to somebody who's living in black mold, you know, but that happened really. I mean, I'll, I'll backtrack a little bit, you know, you know, three, four months down the line, people going back in their houses who banged pal and it was never cleaned out the right way. Now they're developing health problems. I mean, there were more old people dying from the after effects around here than the initial flood itself, you know, mm. because of, you know, the information wasn't there. You don't, you know. Yeah. People walked around. You know what I mean? They weren't telling you the dangers of that shit just yet. You know. And is there is it's there not exactly calm. Is there any support oh, really? Sorry. So no, it's okay. Is there any support really at this point left in that neighborhood? I mean, I mean, I know like other than like neighbors helping each other, obviously, but like, you know, no, that's the, the only thing left. That's the only thing left here. You have. Well, that's the one hub that I helped organize is still out there. They're still out there. It's I I only work when they really need something done with them. Mm-hmm. But they give like um they have like health buses, they're like Medicaid buses that drive around and they'll check you out. There's only two neighborhoods that have that. That's my neighborhood and the next neighborhood over where everybody's getting sick from this shit. Mm. You know? I can, I mean, my neighbor had pneumonia twice. I wow. get pneumonia in the summer. Oh, wow. You yeah. know what I mean? And then yeah. You, got, you know, me with the mold in my stomach. I mean, you know, I was out and had a bunch of shit, you know, every day, you know. But now you got people who are just living in the neighborhood itself, and you still have houses like that, and, you know, houses that were just never kept up with in the first place, that were just left the rock. I mean, I wish Dustin has amazing pictures he was in. And, you know, there's houses here. I mean, it happened right before Halloween. There's houses here that still have the same Halloween decorations up from that, from the flood. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? I do. So, I, saw, I saw that in the flood zone here. I mean, it wasn't as long, but, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, that's, that's always a little... That's a you know what I mean? So, you know, a year and a half goes by. Yeah. And, you know, these health issues and people still aren't in their homes. You know, so these neighborhoods are pretty much ghost towns. You know, the the neighborhood right next to me got hit just almost just as, I mean, if not worse than we did. You know, so these are the, really the two neighborhoods. You know, I worry about because I could walk one phone call, I could walk down the street and get something for somebody. You know. Mhm. Um, so the after the after effects are still here. The city has done shit. The Build It Back program that they, you know, put in place, it's now two years. They haven't built one house. Damn. (laughs) You know, I mean, that goes away from, you know, the organizing part of it, but, you know. No, that's that's perfect. That's the kind of thing I'm looking for here. So, yeah. 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 I mean, we've, we've, even when we were on the ground, we were engaging local politicians through social media. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We were reaching, you know, hit, hitting the right people because, you know, you seen what was going on. You know what I mean? You hit on the right nerve and the right information will get out there, you know? So we were taking advantage of, you know, of that Occupy minds we got with the social media as well as, you know, using that to link up with, smaller groups as far as, you know, aid going in. The Red Cross, fuck the Red Cross. We had, you know, people from Long Island 
like a, a big, like, um, we were calling them kitchen trucks. Mm-hmm. They'd get up at five in the morning, at five in the morning every day. They'd make 70 pounds of soup and just drive to big pots in the neighborhoods and we would stand it out. Mm-hmm. You know, so we had systems going on with local, you know, restaurants, things like that, way before the Red Cross even showed up. And all you that know, depended but, on your um, local I, connections. It depended on knowing people. It was, yeah, we had a lot of community members, but then you had also through social media mm-hmm. and these other, you know, other yeah. groups who do stuff, passing the word out. Okay, yeah, here they are. Go find them. I, I'd be out on the corner, you know, I'd be receiving deliveries like I was, you know, in a warehouse or something almost. And people would drive up and go, oh, you're Liam? i say, yeah, who are you? Oh, we got hot pastrami sandwiches courtesy of this, that, and the other. Oh, wow, well, yeah. Right, cool. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, through the store, I mean, you know, we had that almost hive mind because, I mean, you know how it was, mm-hmm. you know. But we got the locals in on that, you know. For sure. Got a Facebook good. Go home and, you know, Nicole Malia Hawkins, she's a, a rep out here. Get a hold of her. I mean, we had reps from other districts hitting us up, not even going to, you know, the Red Cross straight away. They were coming down here and getting dirty, mm-hmm. taking a list. Okay, we can get the pallets of water. We can do this. Oh, okay. And then, you know, we, we started running into individual families. And that's how we started, you know, branching out with, with that, you know. They were coming with individual needs, special needs, oh, you know. Yeah. It's just children and stuff like that. And we handled it like social workers, man. Because we, you know, we kind of had a grasp on it already. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because you know what I'm getting at? I do. And we weren't... You know, and it was so much easier. I mean, for me to be in my own neighborhood doing that. You know what I mean? Because people would walk up and they, you know, they'd look at them and then they'd see me and come over and grab something to eat right away. Sure. You know. Uh, um, you know. Yeah. So, so, all right. So let's. I mean, you know, we we're both aware of what's going on in the world. So this, I mean, this is going to happen again. You know, there's going to be more climate is that is more extreme weather we all know this is coming so what you know what 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 do cities have to do differently next time in your opinion for me i gotta leave <laughs> everybody needs to evacuate that's for one mm-hmm. but the best thing i've noticed and you know even you know when the london floods hit you know people were contacting me well what do we do You know what I mean? And it's just basically everything I've been saying, you know? Well, and I talked to you, of course, when we had our our flood down here. You know, I talked to you about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's people are people, you know what I mean? And people got to remember that, you know, in the face of disaster, you know, in the aftermath. You you can't, I mean, let's face it. We're in what we got hit with. There's no way we could have did anything about that. You know, so I can't even say, oh, yeah, you know, pressure people to get seawalls and stuff. That's not good that I watched the National Guard leave people behind. So a seawall and any of that stuff, I'm not even going to count on it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it, you know, local, you know, if you want to call them, you know, community boards and, you know, things like that, you know, it's good to, you know, try to maybe plug the vent in if something should happen and learn from what worked and what didn't work, just like we did in the parks, you know what I mean? And just remember that, you know, community's actually there. I mean, you walk around the neighborhood now and it's it's a lovey-dovey song, but it's still somewhat there. People forgot who they were and people do come together and that needs to be keyed in on, you know? But as far as, you know, People have to step up and do it. And, and, and I mean, and be aware, be aware that this could happen to them. So it, it would be good to, you know, 
if you were if people are actually worried about it in their areas, go find you know what you know you guys did, or you know what happened you know in in Long Island and things like that you know because Long Island is thriving you know like you said the Red Hook collective are amazing. They went from you know disaster relief to now full blown community work. You know so that's a great thing right there too. You know. Mhm. Mhm. Um. And so I mean, do you think that? instead of sending the Red Cross in per se, or, you know, the equivalent of them, not necessarily them even, but like, it seems like it's better to empower a local network if possible, rather than trying to impose. Most definitely. Most definitely. Because I mean, everybody sees what, what, what happened with the Red Cross here, you know, it, it was on the news, how terrible they fucking handled things, you know? So, I mean, it's, Mm-hmm. I say, yeah, go local, go absolutely local. Even when people were asking me, you know, what, where, where can I send this or where can I send that? I'm, I'm uncomfortable with just sending it to a street corner. You know what I mean? I would give them, okay, yeah, the Steven Silla Foundation, these guys, these guys, you know, even fucking biz. You know what I mean? I want to, I want to get food out there. Okay, here's, here's a, a soup kitchen. Donate some, you know, supplies to them. You know what I mean? So, like you said, stick with the new locals because they're already there. <laughs> you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Everybody mm-hmm. from the Red Cross there was from they were from Boston. You know, and nothing against Boston people, but how are you going to talk to somebody that you know they they had no social skill? Mm-hmm. And along with the Red Cross rolling here, they didn't even bring any. You know. Psychothera- you know, social workers, psychotherapists, you know, even nurses that kind of judge people's mental state, you know. Yeah, one of the things I noticed in yeah. the flood here was that most of the people doing that work were from churches, which was cool for some people, but there's also a whole bunch of people who really aren't comfortable talking to a priest or a rabbi or anyone religious about that stuff. Well, exactly, you know, yeah. that that's a big thing, too. But when you get so many good local groups together, there's something for everybody. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I had Muslim, like um, a Muslim youth group working with the JCC, which is a Jewish organization, cleaning out backyards <laughs> together. That's great. Because they they were from you know from the next neighborhood over, and they okay, what do we do? Okay come over here and this lady needs this start here and go <laughs> you know what I mean because yeah. they would kind of just show up and we dispatched them because where was the Red Cross giving orders I mean shit the National there's a great picture of me I wish I could find it of me taking a picture of the National Guard while the National Guard's taking a picture of me <laughs> you know mm-hmm. you know so the Red Cross is almost to a point of like it's disaster porn yeah. For them. They were showing up, getting a photo op while we were putting in the work. You know. But yeah. like you were saying, you know, in the future people who live in any of these, you know, these flood areas and they're concerned and things like that. Look what other places have done. You know what I mean? Because you're not it, it you're not gonna get help from anybody fucking else. You know. Mhm. Fucking FEMA, dude. FEMA was handing out old the leftovers from the New York City Marathon. Oh wow! Do you know what I mean? I mean, shit. They handed Kenneth Lip a, a fucking New York City Marathon bag with an orange and a granola bar in it. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like yeah. <laughs> how did so right away you fucked up? <laughs> you know. Mhm. You know mm-hmm. so this. The, the sterileness of these out of these big big charities, they're they're a company, so it's like bringing McDonald's in, almost to a degree, you know. You, you're not going to survive that way because look, what, the company's already fucking did it to us. So what are they going to do when they come back into the neighborhood? You know. Mhm. You know, and with social media, it's great because you can connect with somebody right fucking there. You know. 
for sure. And a lot of people, you know what I mean? That that was the most brilliant thing. And even with Oklahoma, if you notice, see how quick that got together, bang, because we used what we did here and applied it to that. I mean, yeah, I tricked a lot of people into going there, but that's a different ball game. <laughs> you know. <laughs> So, you know, but people have to learn from what works. Yeah. My, my, um, so the last question I have is, is you know, looking at what happened saying you already said something about leaving. Do you, do you think that humans are going to have to abandon some of the places we've been living? Do you think some of these places are a lost cause? It's just too too much to try to, to live in these places as, as more of this happens? No, definitely not. I mean... Weather's changed throughout the course of fucking history, of course. Mm-hmm. But these places that are like the whole New York Eastern Seaboard, for example, it, the stuff's been here for over you know 250 years. It hasn't happened in 250 years. It might have happened a million years ago in New York. You know what I mean? But yes, okay, this is all coming up because we fucked the planet up. That's mm-hmm. you know, that's fun. But in that case, we can take steps to kind of prepare better. You know what I mean? No, there was no way they could have predicted what exactly happened here. So neighborhoods like mine should be prepared for the worst. It's a turn, you know, if you're hurricane prone and things like that. If you go to parts of Florida, yeah, okay, they're kind of ready for it. But if they got hit with a whopper, they'd be fucked. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They would absolutely be fucked. And, and the way things work in Florida, you don't have lights for two weeks. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's no running water because everything's electric. Right. So, you know, how do you kind of, okay, we know that's going to happen. So we need to be ready for that because that's one of the issues in our area. You know, okay, we're, we're all on electric, you know, so, okay, we got to look at that and be prepared for that if nobody from the fucking state or from the government is going to help areas like that, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. My neighborhoods like mine, they want us fucking out of here anyway, because it's, you know, I'm 11 blocks from the beach, but they'll still call it beach from property. Sure. So they'll gladly wipe us, they'll gladly gentrify us with water and then build whatever they want. So it's up to people to fight for their shit, you know? Most definitely everybody, if you want to live here and you have to, yeah, you got to stand up for yourself. Absolutely, you know? Even if it's, you know, these these New York City programs that aren't happening, people are getting angry and they're going to, you know, they're getting, I don't want to quote radicalized, but they're getting more involved because it now affects them. So people need to be aware of it before it affects them, which, you know, we try to do anyway, but that's what's going to have to happen because something like that happens out of nowhere. At least you have somewhat of an idea for it. You know, Mm -hmm. you can't rely on anybody else, but, but yourselves and your community to get that word out there that, okay, this could happen. We need to be fully prepared for it at the schools with anybody, you know, and a city evacuation plan or a city program for it ain't going to fucking help you. It failed this entire state. It failed this entire city, except Wall Street. <laughs> you know, they were right. up running in, in four, fu- four fucking days. And then meanwhile, the firefighter who lives four blocks away from me can't get back in his fucking house because he can't afford to fix it. You know what I mean? So it, it's up to the communities. And it's up to people to support those communities as they go through it. Or beforehand. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm just worried about it. No, 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 that's good. Actually that's no, that's really good. Um I guess uh, that's most of what I was gonna ask you about, unless there's something else that you've thought of as we're talking that you wanna throw in. I mean, like I I mean the like I said, the successes that we had here and then, you know, then even boom, Oklahoma happened and then, you know, and then Texas happened and, you know, all these things, 
most of us who, you know, are already in the, you know, you're in your community, we're here doing this and that, you know, we were all able to share this type of information. And that was, to me, the, the best absolute fucking part that, you know, hey, I'm, you know, I'm in London and, you know, we're getting hit with these massive floods and blah, 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 blah. Somebody told me I should talk to you. Out of nowhere, I don't know, you know, these are people I've never met in my life or even heard of on Twitter, you know, and usually run into people in the same circles, but these are random people, random neighbors and, you know, people who live there who were afraid and who knew from what they saw here that their government wasn't going to do shit for them in the first place, so they were ready to take it into their own hands, you know. And find that neighbor with the generator and, and set up shop there or, you know, find something like suitable to, you know, start helping people and help themselves and things like that, you know. So communication and, you know, the ideas that already work and not relying on, you know, people coming to save you is not going to happen. <laughs> you know, that that's my main thing. I, I push that. Mm-hmm. You know, if you... You know, people have to be aware of it. That's good. All right. I think that's what I got for now. Thanks for thanks for taking some time, man. Really appreciate it, brother. Yeah, whatever you need, man. I yeah. mean, it's, it's going to help, help people in the long run. 